Find out how to volunteer on Martin Luther King Day and beyond. This message is brought to you by the Corporation for National... Welcome back to the final segment of the show for today. Uh, we're talking about slavery and gun violence in the South, and Alana has given us quite a bit of information relative the, to the fact of the existence of slavery, which created fear among the population, and by creating this fear, it also created the possibilities of the arming of uh, people in order to, what, protect themselves against slave violence. And I think you've indicated at least uh, three insurrections, Alana, dealing with Harper's Ferry, John Brown, uh, with Nat Turner, and, and Sono Rebellion, and, and Sono Rebellion, and et cetera. Now let's let's move on beyond uh, 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 the South, uh, beyond the Civil War, and talk about some of the other things that helped to create that kind of violence in the South uh, after the institution of slavery uh, came to an end. Now, when you think about <coughs> violence in the South after slavery, you usually think about Martin Luther King's assassination at the Lorraine Hotel in Memphis, Tennessee. And uh, Malcolm, Malcolm uh, most people don't think of this, but I think I think of this sometimes when I hear about it. Malcolm X's father and how he was in a car crash with a Ku Klux Klan member and he was severed in half. Mm -hmm. Now they think that that car crash was actually on purpose that the Ku Klux Klan targeted his family because they used to burn crosses in his yard. And when and when he was, and his mother was so distraught over Malcolm's father's death that he, she actually had to admit herself into a mentally insane ward. And so he was on his own, so he moved down to New York City where he, uh, where when Moses King was later going around the world talking to people, that's when they met and they bonded a bit. But basically, their stories are two different stories. Now, now when you go to Moses King, you think how he had peaceful protest. Mm -hmm. He did everything the way the Lord warned him to do it. He did it calmly, no gun violence. Now Malcolm X, he was the exact opposite. He did things with violence. He yelled. He fought for what he wanted. Now Martin Luther King was so much more calm. And when you think about them, some people don't notice it right away, but they were doing the same things, but in different ways. That's how John Brown, well, John Brown and Nat Turner were. They were doing the same, now they were doing the same thing, but for a, a little bit of different reasons. Mm -hmm. So basically when you think about them, that's what you think about their similarities. And then the gun violence is, is, is present throughout uh, this. Now, one of, one of the more famous incidents I think you've mentioned to me earlier <coughs> had to do with the uh, Emmett Till. How did Emmett Till fit into all of this gun violence and this violence that was in the South? Well, Emmett Till was a young boy when he was kidnapped from his Mississippi home where the Ku Klux, Klux, Klux Klan pistol whipped him and gouged out his eyes completely did so much to him, all because he allegedly flirted to a white woman when she asked him to. She asked him to. So if he didn't do it, you could only imagine what would happen if he didn't do it. But when he did, when he does something that a white lady asked for, he gets murdered. What would happen if he didn't do what she asked for? Mm -hmm. And so, uh, so Emmett Till, Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, uh, all of this violence that. Uh, persisted during the, the uh, institution of slavery, all pointed to the fact that uh, many people in the South felt that there was a need for weapons and a need for guns, and not only against slaves, but against uh, other whites who might also be willing to overthrow slavery. And I think you mentioned two of them. Tell me about something about John Brown. I think you mentioned him uh, quite prominently in dealing with this. Now, John Brown had a raid, the raid in Harper's Ferry, and he was basically a lot like Nat Turner, but there were two different times, different places. Now his raid was the same thing as Nat Turner, yet he was like, well, we're going to attack on Harper's Ferry, kill these slave owners, but there's a catch. <coughs> John Brown was Caucasian. He was an abolitionist. Nat Turner was a Freedman, he was a freed slave. And now, back then, 
they had no idea what John Barrow was going on because they thought, yeah, he was, yeah, he, he's white, he doesn't stand up for slavery, he owns slaves, but it wasn't like that. He was an, <coughs> an abolitionist. And, and so John Brown's uh, attack upon Harper, they w but now, one of the things that happened to John Brown was John Brown was hanged, was he not? And so was Nat Turner. Both uh, were hanged. Well, tell me something about his, the, the hanging of John Brown. Now, I mentioned this in segment one. Stonewall, future Confederate General Stonewall Jackson and John Wilkes Booth, the, uh, um, the man who assassinated Abraham Lincoln, uh, President Abraham Lincoln, were both present at his execution. And many people don't know this, but John Wilkes Booth stole a Confederate uniform to gain admission to John Brown's execution. Now, I'm not exactly sure why he wanted to be there so badly that he had to steal a Confederate outfit. But basically, when you think about it, you can think about he wanted to see, he, he wanted to see him die. He wanted to see somebody who cared about slavery die, perish. Mm -hmm. and, and so with these two insurrections, the John Brown slave insurrection and uh, the uh, Emmett Till, and, and I think one, one of the final inc incidents of uh, violence in the South has, has to do with, some, with the uh, celebration of Dr. King's birthday. What about uh, the assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King? And how would you fit all of that into uh, this violence that you've talked about? Well, the assassination of Martin Luther King he was shot and killed at the Lorraine Hotel while standing on his balcony, and right below him was Jesse Jackson, who was the first to notice that Moses King mm -hmm. perished. And he was murdered because he stood up for African American rights. He fought back against um, John Crow laws, Jim Segregation. Crow. Segregation. Segregation. Mm -hmm. And people didn't like that. So they decided to to shoot him so it would all basically stop when it happened. Then came the NAACP and they became stronger hmm. and then they took over their, uh, that place. At, uh, the NAACP represents uh, Dr. King hmm. and his peaceful way of getting things over with having rights for African Americans. Hmm. Now the Black Panthers, hmm. they were fought with violence and uh, Another thing that I think many people may know is that Tupac Shakur and his uh, mother and grandmother were all a part of the Black Panther Society. And they fought again, they fought for rights with anger. They did not fight in peaceful ways. The NAACP and Martin Luther King did. Now, the Black Panther Society represents Martin Luther King, and that's how that went along. And so you've got all of this violence and, and, and in the end over the last minute that we have here uh, what would you say to young people in terms of all the things that you've said today about violence how would you uh, I would say stop gun violence uh, I mean it's, uh, who is it helping mm -hmm. you killing somebody else isn't helping anybody you just create more violence for the world mm -hmm. and what, what would you say about all about, about the need for guns do you think that there's a real need for guns uh, anywhere now um, well, I'm not sure. Guns hurt people. Well, actually, I don't think there is a need for guns, really. I mean, now people say there is a need for guns, but what about protection? Now, you'd have to live in a perfect world that have to uh, have no guns, no, no anything, no crime. But there's always going to be guns around, and no matter how, how much people try to stop it, it's up to, the, to, to today's generation to stop it. And so you think that there's a real need and, and, uh, on the part of people today to sort of come together and move against violence and uh, in a real sense, as Dr. Martin Luther King said, to love one another. You think that there's a need for that today, and you stand mm -hmm. uh, as an advocate for that kind of understanding. Is that, is that what you're telling me uh, as we enter uh, the last uh, 30 minutes, 30 uh, seconds of this show that say? I do. You believe that, uh, yeah. and that, that people should be uh, uh, warm and, and, and wonderful toward one another and move away from violence, gun violence. Uh, hug each other, uh, hug your neighbor, love your neighbor. Love everybody. And, and, what's, and, what's the problem with that? And, okay, very good. Of course, Lana, let me thank you again for bringing by that unusual kind of information. <laughs>
uh, today. And uh, also, let me encourage our audience to uh, tune in again next week for another informative edition of Comments. Thank, Thank you, you and, and good, good morning. morning.